My first article was published in 1977. It was on birds of Assam. So I have so far written 100, about 950 articles. These are published in different newspapers, journals, magazines, 28 books and monographs, and about 52 technical reports. In addition, academically also, I did my PhD on primates, wildlife. Subsequently, I did DSC also, Doctor of Science. In fact, I was only the second successful candidate of Guwahati University. That was on mammals of Northeast India. My various postings in different remote areas of Assam has in fact helped me to reach out to many of the otherwise less visited reserve forests, unclassed forests. So for example, you see I was DC of Baksa and Baksa had 60% of Manas National Park. So I could regularly visit Manas. I could contribute to some extent in its conservation efforts. I wrote a book on Manas. Prior to that, I was posted in Karbi Anglong also as a DC. I have written a book, A Naturalist in Karbi Anglong. In the book, I suggested some protected areas. And one gentleman joined as chief executive member, Mr. Jotson Bay, long back, about 20 years back. And then uh, he was really interested in wildlife. He read the book and called me, discussed with me, and ultimately agreed to create three, four wildlife sanctuaries in Karbi Anglong. Similarly, once I was posted in Tinsuke as its founder, project director of DRDA. So there I carried out extensive surveys in rainforest areas of Upper Assam. And I, in fact, I mapped and proposed now an upper Dihing reserve forest as a protected area, which is now Dihing Patkai National Park. So likewise, you know, my various postings have helped me. And I could also help the fringe, fringe people. For example, when I was project director DRDA, many poachers who used to collect, you know, ducklings of white and wood duck were provided assistance by me under DRDA. So they stopped hunting. Karbi Anglong also. In Manas also, I motivated some groups, poaching poacher groups, who ultimately handed over their arms to me as a district magistrate. So likewise, I found that, you know, at the end of the day, my government postings had helped me. In 89, I joined in Dokuakana as its first or founder subdivisional officer civil, SDO civil. So there I found, you know, a lot of villagers, they poison birds. So I motivated them and many of them had stopped. In fact, uh, there is a place near Dukwakana called Kuabari Doloni, which is an important bird area also. Local people had, they put a signboard that it is a sanctuary, people's sanctuary and no bird should be killed. So likewise, you know, wherever I was posted, without posting also, during my project activities also, I motivated people with posters. I used to have my own drawings in posters and with appeal to them that don't kill, let us live. They also have the right to live, something like that. And I used to have, you know, informal meetings with them, awareness meetings. Maybe in a tea stall, a school, college, wherever there was opportunity in any means. One fine morning, I suddenly found that I am surrounded by about 250 wild elephants. I was, of course, inside a vehicle, a gypsy. We didn't make any noise, no hue and cry, but it was a dangerous situation. But fortunately, elephants, they trumpeted, but slowly they moved away. There are some specific efforts. For example, I'm still with the Rhino Foundation for Nature in Northeast India, an NGO. From that NGO, we carried out a lot of conservation activities on rhinos, including 
providing, you know, in fact, replacing old wireless system in Orang and Pogujara Wildlife Sanctuary in 90s. Then we have provided vehicles also, motorbikes for anti-poaching patrolling, constructed anti-poaching camps also, particularly in Orang. Motorbikes we provided to Orang as Pogujara as well as Kaziranga. Manas also we provided some equipments. Then I carried out a specific surveys or research on white wood duck and some grassland rarities like black-breasted parrot bill, Jarton's babbler, because grasslands are, you know, shrinking habitat. And uh, outside protected areas, there is hardly any good grassland areas left. So a lot of motivations required. And of course, uh, in Arunachal, good news is that we found a lot of these grassland rarities outside the protected areas, on private land also. But the fact is that, you know, in private land, there is no security guarantee. Tomorrow they might convert the entire habitat into cultivated field or settlement. But even then we tried, we motivated them, we talked to them at least. At least birds are still there. Let us see. That environmental protection, environmental preservation, is for our own survival. Animals, birds, these are indicator species. They indicate the degradation of environment. But ultimately it is for our own survival. So everybody will have to work.